There are four photon belts. A photon belt is, as I said, as we breathe out, we have an aura. Have you ever seen your aura? Is your aura beautiful? What color is your aura? Do you know? Have you known those aura machines that's like beautiful aura? What color is it? Changed. <laughs> it changed. Is that a personal question? <laughs> what color is your aura? In the East, they're very blunt. They walk to say, what is your blood type? The blood type is very strong in the East because that tells everything about you. A, O. So it's just the first question, name, birthday, blood type. So said, what do you mean blood type? It's a little bit <laughs> informal there. <laughs> blood type. That's what they ask. Maybe that's the same kind of question. What's your aura? What's the color? <laughs> but anyway, the, the aura reveals a lot about us. The color of the aura. Because that's the energy we're breathing out. And the sun breathes out um, these solar flares. And so as we, as, it gets, as we go slowly into this photon belt, so the photon belt has the power to, to change the energy inside of something. Change the essence of it the essential essence, transform the DNA. Not only the physical, but because of these scholar waves from the universe that are spiritual waves, can change the spiritual as well. For us, mostly stuck on our rocky little planet, the view of the universe begins with Earth. This is Earth, silicon and oxygen based, with a metallic core. The surface is mostly water. It teems with life and rotates once every 24 hours while orbiting a star called the Sun every 365 days. This is the Sun, mostly hydrogen and helium. Its surface temperature is nearly 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. For energy, our sun converts 700 million tons of hydrogen into 695 million tons of helium every second. The sun is part of a solar system formed around 4.5 billion years ago that includes Earth and seven other orbiting planets from Mercury to Neptune. And it isn't a stationary system. Our solar system is spinning flying through space at 134 miles per second, turning in circles as part of a vast collection of stars and star systems. There may be 200 billion stars in this collection called the Milky Way galaxy. An estimated 6 billion of those stars with planetary systems like ours. Our solar system orbits the center of the Milky Way on one of its outer arms. The Milky Way is one of more than 125 billion galaxies that make up the visible universe. close to this to the sun then we're all being affected by it. but not just our planet our entire solar system is being affected by it so all the planets around us Mars Jupiter are all going to natural disasters right now. they don't have the, the pollution that we've done but they're all being affected by the solar flares of that and NASA knows this so I'll show you quick two quick videos about what NASA has shown to prove about the photon belt and the existence of the solar flares that are going to come and the damage they're going to do when they come here source of all life and it could mean the end of life as we know it. NASA did a study and its findings are now out. We're not talking about global warming, a brand new government study on the very real destructi uh, destructive threat of solar storms. Check it out, the surface of the sun, a roiling mass of plasma and charged uh, high energy particles. As we move to the launch pad, we can show exactly what we mean, escaping the surface of the sun and traveling through space to areas down here on Earth. Now this giant fireball, if that ball hit the Earth and its magnetic shield, it would be devastating. 
I want to show you New York City at night. Times Square drove through here at 8 o'clock last night. Streets are empty. But the electric power grid would be wiped out by the current. Lights and computers, transportation, hospitals, all would go down. The study warns it would be a disaster, far worse than anything we have seen before. The menace of these sunstorms poses a bigger threat to more high-tech and advanced countries like the U.S. Everything from our sewage systems to our Wall Street banks operate with our power grid and a game-changing solar storm that could hit at any time. So how worried should we be? Sounds like we should be. Michio Kaku is an astrophysicist and author of The Physics of the Impossible. Sir, good morning to you. Welcome back here. Glad to be on your show. Uh, now, what I'm reading here scares me to death. Should I be that way? That's right. We're talking about a potential Katrina from outer space. Uh, Katrina caused about $100 billion in property damage. And unless we begin to make efforts now to reinforce our satellites and power grid, we could have something maybe 10 times bigger than Katrina because we're talking about the loss of all electricity and all satellite activity. We'd be throwing 100 years back into the past. Michio, has this happened before? In 1859, we had a humongous storm that wiped out telegraph poles, and we tried to then estimate what kind of power could do that. And we now realize that we are very young in the space age. If something like the 1859 storm hit again, it would literally paralyze all the United States, not just for a day or an hour, but for months to years. A transformers would short circuit and burn out. Satellites would be fried to a crisp. And the sun, however, has these storms every 11 years. Every 11 years, the magnetic field flips. But in 2012, we do expect perhaps, perhaps another big one. Well, we have never before in our history, in human history for that matter, relied so much on technology as we do today. And that's part of what they found in the study because we rely so much on our ability to communicate through our computers that they would all go down, which would handicap not just New York, but really the eastern half of the United States. That's what the study finds, which would be far worse than the blackout of New York from four years ago, Michio. Well, that's right. Those blackouts only last for a few hours to a day. But if you start to short circuit all the transformers and blow out the satellites and fry the communications grid, then you're talking about knocking out uh, the United States uh, for months before we can get enough rescue crews and repairmen to handle not just one city, but hundreds of cities around the United States. You know, Michio, sometimes you come on here and you sound like the doctor of doom and gloom. Does, this, well, does something like this keep you up at night? Um, it does, and I think with Katrina, you know, engineers knew that Katrina could happen, but they did nothing because they said that it's not going to happen while I'm around. Well, now we learned the lesson. You have to prepare for things, especially when you know that at some point it's inevitable that we're going to have another big one, like we had back in 1859, except this time we're totally dependent on electricity. Michio, thank you. Hope to see you in person next time. We'll take you on okay. the phone if we can. Michio Kaku, thank you for your time today. 1859. I mean, we're going back 150 years on that, Megan. Now he's wondering about 2012. Watch for this story. Huh? Enter in and then uh, go, go back. Using data from NASA's Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope, scientists have recently discovered a gigantic, mysterious structure in our galaxy. This never-before-seen feature looks like a pair of bubbles extending above and below our galaxy's center. These enormous gamma ray emitting lobes aren't immediately visible in the Fermi All-Sky Map. However, by processing the data, a group of scientists was able to bring these unexpected structures into sharp relief. Each lobe is 25,000 light years tall, and the whole structure may be only a few million years old. Within the bubbles, extremely energetic electrons are interacting with lower energy light to create gamma rays, but right now, no one knows the source of these electrons. Are the bubbles remnants of a massive burst of star formation? Leftovers from an eruption by the supermassive black hole at our galaxy's center? Or did these forces work in tandem to produce them? 
Scientists aren't sure yet, but the more they learn about this amazing structure, the better we'll understand the Milky Way. Uh, that as a part of the 2012 process that's going to happen, these sol that solar flare, um, solar flares are going to start to hit the Earth like that. We're going to have that kind of solar flare. NASA already knows about it. So all the data that's in our computers, our entire electrical system, our entire electrical grids, water grids, well, that sets it to, to happen. So that kind of conversation, that kind of honest preparation we need to, to think about. So let's look into why, why 2012 is important. Uh, the first reason is that every 4,000, the Earth is, every 13,000 years, the Earth goes through uh, this kind of photon belt. So it goes through this, this light. So the photon belt is like a light that can change things. And it's also a dimensional gate as well. But Every 13,000 years is sort of a change, a shift that happens that's not so strong with just one belt. But why this time is different uh, is because there are actually four belts happening. Because this is actually the great universe schedule. The Earth was scheduled from the beginning to be the planet that would be responsible for the entire universe right now going through this evolutionary process. Every animal, every planet, every plant, every universe, every galaxy is set to evolve at this moment. So it's such an actually huge um, meaning to this. So that's our Earth there. And click it once. So this is the first photon belt we see. That's why we're getting closer and closer towards the sun and towards the solar flares that are, that are near us. That's because we're entering into to that one right there. And then, so our entire solar system is entering into the sun. And then the sun and its whole entire system is entering in towards, towards the Pleiades. So the plane is at, is at a level six, actually. It's a six level, six dimensional plane. So all of us are heading into, into that dimension in the next one. And the Pleiades is entering into the system of the galaxy. So they're all set to shift and evolve at this moment. And then that last one, the galaxy is actually headed into, into the universe. So the entire universe is going through another big bang process. And the core player in this is the Earth. Depending on the quality of our evolution this time, then everyone else's quality will increase as well. 